It has taken me so long to find the words. And yet, it feels like they have always been with me. Maybe they have, waiting for me in my fingertips, on my tongue. So now they all spill out at once. Some of them are bent or fractured or broken with no order at all. But they will straighten out in time. They will unfurl their wings. I do not doubt it. I only beg of you, reader, not to rip them up while they are growing. These are my thoughts, my dreams, my secrets, and my daily life. And I have written them all down for you. These are my 12 months of poetry, of words. I only wish that I had started sooner. That was the opening poem to the first poetry book that I ever wrote. When I was 14 and I first started writing, I had no idea what it was going to become. I just knew that I was emotional, I knew that I liked to write, and I knew that I needed some way to combine the two. So, after a unit in my eighth grade English class, I knew I had found my voice. The intensely orchestrated language of poetry was what fascinated me most. I was able to take a bad day at school or a world event and turn it into something beautiful. When I was angry, I wrote. When I was confused or happy or sad, I wrote. Basically, whenever I was feeling something, I wrote. And it was my freshman year of high school. Do you remember your freshman year of high school? So many feelings, so much writing. I decided to write 10 pages of poetry each month for 12 months. And I definitely didn't always achieve that goal. In fact, that December, I only wrote three poems, and one of them was about the fact that I wasn't writing. <laughs> but the motivation never left me, and I loved what I was doing. So after 12 months of writing, I walked downstairs, and I told my mother that I needed to borrow her credit card because I had written a book and I wanted to order it. <laughs> I'm sure that was a surprising conversation for her, but it's one of my favorite memories because I realized I loved what I was doing more than I cared about anyone's opinion, even my mother's, whose I valued so much. For 12 months, I had been doing what felt innately right to me. And I remember in those first few days after I published my book, how people reacted when they realized what I was doing. My fingers are still caught in yesterday, but my toes have dipped into tomorrow. That was how I felt when I first published my book, like I was seeing into the future, dipping into tomorrow. Now you can see the difference that time and effort make in my work. I would want to tell them that they made me from a girl into a woman. But he is only a man if he wants to be. Fourteen-year-old Charlotte could never have written a poem like that. She didn't understand the rules of poetry. She didn't know how she liked to write. <coughs> when I first started writing, somehow I didn't understand that what I wrote didn't have to immediately be good. I was allowed to learn and improve in order to create something impressive. Now it might sound simple, but when I realized that all I had to do was start in order to create something that I was proud of, my whole life changed. Everyone is scared of creating because they're worried that what they make might not live up to their expectations. But my first poetry wasn't very good. I made spelling mistakes or the grammar was bad or there was too much detail. But I started writing, I didn't stop, and now I'm here. So if you're trying to achieve a dream, I've made a list of three things you can do in order to try and do that. Number one, start small. When you first start something, 
it's important to not bite off more than you can chew. I only wrote every few days when I first started. Number two, set time limits for your goals. When I first started writing, I told myself I only had to write for 12 months. After that, the future was unknown. But setting a time limit gives your goal light at the end of the tunnel, and it makes it feel more achievable. Number three, listen to yourself. I could have never written for two and a half years if it didn't make me feel something. You might be able to set time limits and achieve goals, but the end result will be meaningless if it doesn't move you. So pay attention to yourself. And if you realize that what you're doing no longer makes you feel passionate, that matters. But if it does, you owe it to yourself to do everything in your power to try and achieve that goal. I think trying is the best. Yes, it is the trying that pulls me through. So what are you waiting for? Start now and let the trying pull you through. <laughs>